I'll build this beginner-friendly Tableau dashboard step-by-step. Step. We'll start by creating the charts and then bring them together in a clean, structured dashboard. Then I'll add interactivity to make the dashboard dynamic. And I'll keep it concise and clear so it's easy to follow along. I'm starting on the page you see when you first open Tableau Desktop. Then I'll hit Connect to Data to choose the data source. I'll be using the Sample Superstore dataset, which comes with Tableau and is available to everyone. On the Data Source tab, you can see this is a dataset containing order details for a company. To get started, I'll click on the tab at the bottom to open our worksheet. And the first visual I'll build are KPIs. The easiest way to add our key metrics is by double clicking on the Measure Names field, which will automatically create a table showing all the measures in our dataset. And a measure is simply a number you can aggregate. For example, you can see the count of orders within the measure values list and in the table we just created. I'm going to start by selecting all the measures that I don't want to include. Then I'll right click and remove them. I can also drag the measures around to reorder them in the table. And right now, the count of orders is not the actual number of orders because it's counting the number of rows in the data set. So I'm going to double click into this measure and type a D after count to get the count distinct. Then I'll change orders to the order ID field. And this will give us the unique number of orders within the data set. To add another measure, double click within the measure values list. And this time I'll type the count D of the customer name field. So this is going to give me the unique number of customers within the data set. Now we have a basic table with some key metrics. And I'm going to show how to format them so they look like polished KPIs. I'll start with the number formatting since the sales value has a lot of digits. We can format each measure individually by right-clicking on the field in the measure values list and then selecting format. For the number formatting, I'm going to choose a custom currency. Then I'll change the display units to millions. And you can see the number formatting only affected sales. I'll format the profit field as well and change this to a custom currency. Then I'll click the down arrow for the decimal places to remove the decimals. To format the names of the metrics, I'll start by right-clicking on the header and hitting Format. Then using Font, I can increase the size of the text. And using Alignment, I can center the headers. But the distinct count of order ID is a really long label, so I'm going to right-click and edit the alias. And I'll change it to something more simple, like Orders. I'll do the same thing with customers so that we have simple, intuitive labels. To format the actual values, I'll use text within the marks. Then I'll edit the text, and I'll make the size of the text slightly bigger than I made the labels so that it calls attention to the values. Then under alignment, I'll also center these horizontally. To remove these lines, I'll right-click format on the worksheet, and under borders, I'll go to the row divider and choose none. To make these key metrics stand out, I'm going to color them. And each of these metrics is a measure, defined by the measure names field. So all I need to do is drag the measure names into the marks card. Then I'll click on these dots and make it a color. But instead of coloring the text, I want to color the background. So I'll change the mark type to a square. And I'll use a size slider to increase the size of these squares. Using this legend over here on the right, I can edit the colors. And I'm just going to go through and color each of these metrics using Tableau's built-in color palettes. And if you want to use colors that aren't in Tableau's default palette, I have another video that shows how you can do that in just a few seconds. I'm choosing light colors here because I want the text to stand out against the background. But if the colors are still too vibrant, you can use color within the marks to decrease the opacity of the squares. So now it complements the text but doesn't overpower it. And I'm just going to adjust these KPIs a little bit before I start on the next visual. I'll first double click on this worksheet so I can rename it KPIs. Then I'll hit the icon to the right to create a new worksheet. And I'll name it Trend. This is a trend over time, so I'm going to start by adding our order date field to the columns. Then I'll right click on order date so I can change this to be in months. And all I need to do to make this a line chart is drag sales into the rows. But to make this more interactive, I'm going to let users choose which metric they want to see the trend for. So I'll click this little drop down arrow and choose Create Parameter. A parameter is a tool that lets users change values in Tableau. 
I'll start by naming this the trend metric. Then I'll change the data type to a string. And in the allowable values, I'll choose a list. And here's where I'm going to type in all the metrics that I want users to be able to pick from. So I'm going to do the same four metrics that I used for the KPIs. This parameter stores these values as options and lets users choose which one they want to display in the chart. And you can see this parameter now appears in the bottom of our data pane. I'm going to right click to show the parameter on the worksheet. And now we need to assign the actual values to be displayed. So I'm going to hit that little drop down arrow again and this time create a calculated field. This will be for the trend metric values. And I'll use a case statement to apply some simple conditional logic. So I'll start by typing the word case. Then I'll type our trend metric parameter. On the next line, I'll say when the text sales, then take the sum of the sales field. This is saying when sales is selected within our parameter, output the sum of sales. On the next line, I'll type when the text profit, then take the sum of the profit. And I'll do the same thing for orders, but this time I want it to output the count distinct of the order IDs. And for customers, I'll output the count distinct of the customer names. So we basically link the parameter with the values that we want it to represent. And you have to type the text end to close out the case statement. So now I'm going to replace the sum of sales with the trend metric values field that we just created. And now I can use the parameter to change the values of what's shown in the chart. But the access title is not very intuitive, so I'm going to right click on the access to edit it. Then under the title, I'll change it from custom to the trend metric parameter. That way our access title updates based on what metric is selected within our parameter. To change the color of the line, you can use color within the marks. To make the line thinner or thicker, you can use the size slider. While a parameter changes what's displayed in a chart or calculation, a filter controls what data is included or excluded. So for example, if I drag segment into the filter shelf, I can choose to only include the consumer segment. And I'll right click on this filter to display it next to the parameter. So you can see the filter is limiting the data that's shown, while the parameter is actually changing the metric being displayed in the chart. And since this chart is dynamic, I'm going to right click on our title to edit it so I can make it dynamic as well. I'll start by typing the text for, then I'll go to insert and choose our segment field. Then I'll type a space, go to insert, and choose the trend metric parameter. And now we have a dynamic title that updates based on what's selected in the parameter and the filter. I'll also right click on our access to edit it so I can remove the title. I'll move on to the next visual by creating a new worksheet. I'll name this subcategory and build a bar chart to show the sales for each subcategory. So I'm going to start by hitting the little arrow next to product, which will show all the fields in the product hierarchy. I'll drag the subcategory field into the rows. And because this is in a hierarchy, I can use the plus sign to add more detail, and then the minus sign to take away some detail. Then I'll drag our metric, which is sales, into the columns. And you can see I can expand and collapse the subcategory and the sales updates based on that level of detail. Next, I want to color the bars based on the amount of sales. So I'm going to drag the sales field into the marks, click on the dots, and make it a color. Then I'll use the legend to edit the colors. And we have different color options here compared to our KPIs because sales is a continuous field. So the color is going to blend smoothly from one value to another. I chose to go from light gray to light blue. Now the bars with lower sales blend more into the background, while the bars with higher sales, which I want to be noticed, stand out in blue. I'll right click on the title of the worksheet to edit it, and change the name to products. Then I'll right click on the field label to hide it. For the next visual, I'm going to start by creating a new worksheet. I'll name this location and build a map that shows the sales across the different states. I'll scroll down so I can see the latitude and longitude fields that are automatically generated whenever you have a location field. I'll double click on both of these to add them to the columns and rows. 
Then I'll drop down the location hierarchy so I can move state into the marks. And I want to focus on the United States, so I'm going to drag the country region field into the filters and select just the United States. Right now we're seeing circles on each state because the mark type is set to circle. I'll change this to map so each state is shaded instead. Then I'll drag sales into the marks and make this a color. I'll use the legend to edit the colors. And I'm going to choose the custom sequential palette again. I'll select the same color blue as I did for the subcategory. But I want a little bit more distinction between the colors. So I'm actually going to edit the legend and choose a slightly darker color. That way we get more variation showing the distribution of sales across states. And now it's easy to notice that California and New York have high sales compared to the other states. To customize the look of this map, I'll go to the Map tab at the top and choose Background Layers. And there's two ways to remove the background of a map without changing its structure. You can either adjust the washout to 100% or keep the washout at 0% and uncheck all of the background map layers. This makes maps super customizable in Tableau, since you can choose exactly which details to include. And no beginner dashboard is complete without a table. I'll create a new worksheet to show the top customers in a table. And I'm not going to build a clunky table. Instead, I'm going to keep it simple by showing just the ranking of the top customers and their sales. I'll start by dragging the customer name field into the rows. Next, I'll bring the sales field into the marks. And I'll click those dots to make it text. To get the top customers, I'll drag customer name into the filters and I'll choose to do a top condition. Then I'll make this by field, and you can see it already figured out to do the top 10 customers based on the sum of sales. But this doesn't have to be 10, so I'm just gonna change it to seven. To get these customers in order from highest to lowest sales, I'm gonna right click on the customer name field and hit sort. Then I'll choose to sort this by a field. And again, it figured out to sort this by the sum of sales but I'm gonna change this to descending order so we get it from highest to lowest. And this looks okay as is, but I wanna fully customize this table. So I'm gonna drag customer name into the marks and make this text. Then I'll double click into the marks so I can type the index function. And I'll make this text as well. I like including a lot of my text within the marks because that way I can fully customize how it looks. So I'm gonna click on the text icon within the marks and edit the text. I'll move the index field first, then put a dot after it and the customer name. Then I'll move some of sales after, wrapping it in parentheses with a dollar sign. And using the preview, you can see how it's gonna look. We don't need customer name anymore, so I'm gonna right click and uncheck show header. But I need to keep that field in there to keep that level of detail. Then I'll right click format on the worksheet and for shading, I'll go to row banding and choose none. And that'll get rid of that gray shading. Then under borders, I'll go to row divider and choose none. That way we're left with just a simple ranked list of the top customers and their sales. Now that we've built all the visuals, I'll show how to put them together in a dashboard. I'll start by clicking the second icon at the bottom to create a new dashboard. Then I'll drag this to the far left. To control the amount of space the dashboard takes up, you can adjust the size. I'll set the width to 1300 to use more of the space on the screen. And you can see we have two options under objects, tiled and floating. When I add a worksheet as a floating object, you can see that I can move it anywhere on the dashboard, kind of like arranging sticky notes on a board, which make them great for customized designs. But when I switch the object type to tiled and bring in the same worksheet, it snaps into place within a grid-like structure, kind of like Lego bricks fitting together. And that's why I'm gonna use Tiled for this beginner dashboard because it helps create a structured layout that's easy to manage. I'll drag Trend underneath our KPIs. Then I'll drag Subcategory to the right of all of our objects. I'll move Location under our Trend and Top Customers under our Trend to the right of Location. It looks a little bit messy right now because we still need to position the visuals. You can drag the lines between the tiled objects to resize them, and everything else will automatically adjust. While all the visuals will be tiled, I'll make the parameters, filters, and legends floating so they can sit on top of their visuals. To do this, I'll click the down arrow on the filter and select floating. 
And I'll do the same thing for the parameter in legend as well. Now I can drag these floating objects around to be on top of their visuals. And for the measure names legend, I'm going to click the X to remove it. Then I'll right click on the KPI's title to hide it. Next, I'll change the fit of all these worksheets to fill the entire view. That way the visual resizes to fit perfectly within the container, adjusting both the width and the height. To add a title to this dashboard, I'll drag a text object above all the visuals. I'll type the title of this dashboard, and here's where I can format the font type, the text size, and the color. And I'll drag this title up so it looks like a header. Now I'm just going to go around and adjust the sizing by dragging the edges between the visuals. That way everything is balanced, just like adjusting columns or rows in a spreadsheet to make the data easier to read. And sometimes you want to add some space in between visuals. To do this, I like dragging a text object between the two visuals where I want to add space. I'll hit OK because I don't need any text in there, and then I'll drag it to get the spacing that I want to add. This spacing improves the readability, and it makes the dashboard look more polished. And you can use the same method to create spacing vertically between objects. Next, I'll format the titles of the worksheet so that it's clear what each container and visual represents. I'll right-click on the worksheet title and hit Format. Then I'll change the shading to a light gray. And I'll go through and do this for all my worksheet titles on the dashboard. Adding shading can help visually separate the sections. Then I'll right-click to edit the title so I can center the text. And I'll make all the other titles match by centering them. To format the filter and parameter, I'm going to keep it simple with basic formatting. But there are a lot of limitations, so I have videos on how to fully customize them. I'll start by hitting the drop-down arrow on the filter, and I want to make this a multi-value drop-down. Then I'll right-click on the filter title to edit it. And to make it more clear to users, I'm going to call this Select Segment, and increase the size. I'll edit the title for the parameter as well, and I'll call this Select Metric. Then I'll make the size match the size of our text for the filter. I'll pull Select Metric to the left, and Select Segment to the right. And if you want to make the title bigger so that the filters fit within the title box, a quick trick is to edit the title, hit Enter, type a random letter, and turn it the same color as the background. Then make the size something small like 3. And now our filter and parameter fit within the title of the worksheet. I'll show the simplest way to add some interactivity to your dashboard. Start by clicking into your worksheet and click the filter icon. This will use the worksheet as a filter for the rest of your dashboard. So when you click on a data point like the accessories bar, it filters the other visuals to show only the data related to that section. And if you click the accessories bar again, it clears the filter and returns the dashboard to its original view. This is a super easy way to make your dashboard more interactive and dynamic, and it lets users focus on specific details with just a click. When I click on a state like California within our location worksheet, it's now filtering the KPIs, the trend, the products, and the top customers for just California. Another way to enhance your dashboard is by making the tooltips more useful. A tooltip is the pop-up box that appears when you hover over a data point, like a customer in this table and these are fully customizable. I even have a video on how to add visuals like bar charts inside tooltips. Here we can see there's extra information about our index function that we don't need users to know. To remove it, I'll go to the worksheet, and I'll click Tooltip within the Marks card, and this will let us control the text that's visible to the users. We can also add information to our tooltips. For example, in our trend chart, you can see it says Trend Metric Values instead of the name of the metric. So I'll go back to our trend worksheet and edit the tooltip. And instead of our calculated field name, I'll go to insert and choose the parameter for trend metric. So now it actually displays sales, which is the metric in our chart. And I can choose any metric and the tooltip will update to show the correct metric name. And in 20 minutes, we built a functional dashboard in Tableau. If you're curious about more things you can do in Tableau, I have a site where I organize my videos by topic and I'll include a link to the site in the description.